Show. I'm Michael Costa. We are back on the air. Holy shit, it's been five months. Man, I love my family, but not for five months. This is my first night, and I'm very excited to be here. I've always wanted to host a late night show. I was hoping that it would be on a major network, but I'll take whatever channel this has gone. Now, we have a great show for you tonight, so let's get into the headlines. Obviously, there's one big story in the world right now that we have to cover, the Taylor Swift movie. And <laughs> And we'll get to that later. But first, I want to talk about something that stirs up almost as much passion, the Middle East. That's right. It's my big week as guest host, and I get Israel-Palestine. <laughs> I don't mean to complain, but as far as scheduling goes, this unspeakably tragic geopolitical crisis is not super convenient time for me right now. Because no matter what I come up with, people are just going to say, this guy doesn't know what the f he's talking about. <laughs> and you're right. That's pretty much the only opinion everyone can agree on. Michael Costa is an idiot. And <laughs> what do I know about the Middle East? I'm, I'm from the Middle West. <laughs> I'm from Michigan. The best way I would describe my position on the Middle East is poorly educated. And <laughs> that sounds harsh, but at least I'm aware of it because I read a lot of your posts online, and sometimes it's better not to pretend you know what you're talking about. I have friends on Facebook who have the whole Middle East figured out, when I know for a fact they can't even get car insurance. <laughs> hey, Joey, interesting points. Don't you have three DUIs? Maybe you should focus on you. <laughs> Thankfully, this is why later tonight, I will bring on an actual expert, political scientist, Ian Bremmer will be here to help us make sense of all of it. But here's what I'll say for now. There's a cycle of violence here that feels like it's never ending. It's been going on my whole life, and apparently even longer than that. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who wishes that this cycle would end. And everyone has an opinion for who's responsible for it. It's Israel, it's Palestine, it's Netanyahu, it's Hamas. Everyone's taking a side, but everyone is wrong. Because I spent the weekend reading two lengthy Wikipedia articles, <laughs> and I think it's pretty clear who we can blame for all of this mess. The British, okay? <laughs> yeah. you, Britain, and your nursing home king. <laughs> They're the ones who barged into the Middle East 100 years ago and drew the borders that caused all this mess. And they did it all around the world, by the way. Like, how much of modern civilization is just undoing all of Britain's bad decisions? You want to know how bad they f***ed up maps? They made Ireland two Irelands. <laughs> It's an island. It didn't need borders. But the, <laughs> the British were like, hey, you go. <laughs> so maybe that's the best way we can find peace. Israel and Palestine, it's time to put your grievances aside and join together to invade Britain. Yeah. Now, who's an idiot now, all right? Speaking of problems that won't go away, Donald Trump. Yes. As you all know, the former president is facing 6,000 indictments. And <laughs> he's been complaining a lot about it, but today, a judge told him that, legally speaking, he needs to cram a sock in it. A federal judge just imposed a limited gag order on former President Donald Trump, restricting what he can say about his federal election subversion case. He's now legally barred from attacking special counsel Jack Smith or his team or assailing potential witnesses. That's right, Donald Trump has a gag order, and I guarantee he doesn't even know what that is. <laughs> he probably thinks it means he can't deep throw to McRib anymore, but... <laughs> but good luck, good luck getting Donald Trump to stop talking. The guy's probably still spilling national secrets just out on the golf course, like, should I go with a four iron or a five iron? That reminds me, four and five, first two numbers in the nuclear codes. <laughs> And guess what numbers come next? You'll never guess. I'll just tell you. <laughs> Let's move on to some business news. 
Rite Aid, the only pharmacy chain that hasn't refused to print my pictures, announced that it's filing for bankruptcy. Just when I was about to buy that one DVD player that's been sitting behind the register since 2003. Seriously, this news is shocking to me. Are you telling me it's a bad business model to have one employee for every six stores? I mean, maybe they'd have more profit if their deodorant wasn't locked up in a maximum security prison? Of course these guys were gonna go out of business. I mean, just look at their logo. They were mashing their medicines the old-fashioned way. That's how I make guacamole. It's tragic, though, because as a part of this move, they sadly had to lay off their entire custodial staff 10 years ago. <laughs> My point is, Rite Aid sucks, and I'm glad this happened to them. <laughs> I am gonna keep going to them, though, because they're the closest to my apartment. Also, <laughs> in a related story, Spirit Halloween just opened 9,000 new locations. <laughs> And finally, let's talk about the biggest story in the entertainment world. This weekend, the new Taylor Swift concert film took in $93 million at the box office. Yeah. But it wasn't just the ticket sales that made this a wild weekend at the movies. A Taylor Nation takeover at the weekend box office as Taylor Swift crushes the competition. Audiences bringing that Swifty spirit inside, dancing and singing in their seats, just like Taylor did at the premiere. Okay, white people, we can't talk about black audiences being rowdy in movie theaters ever again. All right, that's over. <laughs> But it truly was a scene this weekend in movie theaters all around the country, so we sent our own Desi Lydic out there to capture the mood. Check it out. Ah, uh, this cinema, where researchers just recently discovered people will actually go watch stuff about women. Who knew? All right, are you actual huge Swifties, or are you just here celebrating women dominating the economy? We're huge Swifties. We saw her in MetLife. Yes. We're seeing her in Amsterdam. Yes. We're seeing her in New Orleans. This could actually make Taylor a billionaire, and I know people give billionaires a hard time, but isn't it kind of cool when it's a girl? I would say that it's better. Yeah. But not great. Okay. Because <laughs> Kylie Jenner is a billionaire, and yeah. it's not, it's still not that no. cool. Okay, follow-up question. Why don't you support women? <laughs> I personally support women's rights and wrongs. When a woman does something right, it's like, yay, like, woman. And then when she does something wrong, it's a little more okay because she's a woman. Yeah. So I built an entire brand on this. You don't have to explain it to me. <laughs> Tell me about your friendship bracelets. I have all the eras. And what's your favorite one if you had to pick one? My favorite one would have to be, would have to be our song. My favorite era is my current era, which is tired and always bloated. Do you want to switch? No. Do you still listen to the Scooter Braun versions? Occasionally. We do sometimes. Yeah. They listen to the Scooter Braun version. They still listen to it. There's a lot of debate over whether to be standing or sitting, quiet or screaming. Will you be screaming? Um, I think I want like the full Rocky Horror Picture Show experience. You know, like the calls and responses. You never get to scream in public, and now you get to. Well, you've never seen me in an orange Julius. <laughs> A safe space for women to gather and let loose that doesn't involve stationary bikes? I'm in. Sold out. Totally sold out. Who would have thought? So how did you like the movie? No spoilers. But like, did she finish the concert? Yes. yes. Which song did you use for a bathroom break? Be honest. We accidentally missed Andy Hero. <laughs> Kids, you just have to learn to hold it in until you get a kidney infection. Oh my gosh. Was everyone singing in there or totally silent? Um, I feel like I was kind of singing under, under my breath. Less singing and more muttering and enchantment. Yeah, like a prayer, like in church. Do you think Taylor should be tax exempt? Well, um, she's already altering local economies everywhere. <laughs> the fans were crazy. Everybody was singing. Everybody was dancing. The sound in the cinema, it's amazing. Although everyone was screaming, I could hear every word. I mean, this is truly a once in a lifetime experience. Yeah, but I'm coming back tomorrow. Oh, back tomorrow.